Okay. Um, and, it's, and the same feeling, the same, uh, man, what about that worship, guys? Amen. And um, just just imagine, yes, if you can give yourselves a round of applause. Uh, just, just remember how you guys started, how everything started. And I told you at the very beginning, you guys can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. And again, in the spirit of the worship and how awesome it was, I want to go ahead and invite uh, JR, Jr., brother, uh, just come on up and uh, the time is yours. Jr. Um, so I just wanted to pray really fast before before I go. I, I need the Holy Spirit to leave. So uh, everybody bow to y'all's heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we come today, Father God, to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, because without you, Father God, we're nothing, Lord. And we thank you for waking us up to see this beautiful day, Lord, that you have created, Father. I thank you, my Father God, for making this day possible, Lord, because, Father God, uh, you know all things, Lord. You know what your people need, my Father God, and I pray, Father God, that tonight, Father God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to flow, Lord. That the Holy Spirit, every word that comes out, Father God, let it be your word, Father God, and not ours, Father God. You get all the praise and you, you, get, you get all the glory here, my Father. Father God, I pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will penetrate every heart, every mind, that it will transform, reborn, make new, make make whole, Father God. You know what your people need, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that by the end of the night, Father God, that everybody will receive, Father God, as we bring forth your word, Father God. And um, we give you all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen. Um, Um, I want to I want to say thank you to uh, uh, to brother Ernesto for um, being obedient to the Holy Spirit because uh, you know when the when the when the Holy Spirit leads we have to obey and and so the Holy Spirit knows exactly what what needs to be said by who and when and so you know, if it wasn't because, you know, Mr. Ernesto, Brother Ernesto wasn't being obedient, we wouldn't be here today. So I just want to say thank you for being obedient, man of God. And uh, thank you guys for allowing us to be here tonight. I know the Lord has something uh, good for all of us, uh, you know, even for myself. Um, so with that being said, um, before I share my testimony with y'all, uh, I just want to read something out of the book of uh, Luke. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, you're more than welcome to turn there. If not, you could just listen. So, uh, so in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 11, the parable of the lost son. Then he said, this is, this is uh, Jesus uh, talking. He's uh, sharing a, a parable about the lost son. He says, a, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my portion of goods that falls to me. So he, he uh, divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country. So the younger son got his portion and then he decided to pack his bags and take off, right? So that kind of sounds familiar. That, that, that right there fits, fits in my story. I don't know about y'all, but in my story, you know, we all got different stories, but in mine, man, that sounds very familiar. And um, because the, the son, he didn't wanna, he, he, he got tired of wanting to follow the dad and the mother's rules basically is what's going on. He wanted to have his free will to go do as he pleased, right? To go enjoy what the world has to offer. 
And we know that, that in this world, if we ain't seeking the Lord and being led by the Holy Spirit, this war, this this world will drain us. If we try to face this world every day without the Holy Spirit, without being led by the Father, this world will drain us. So keep that in mind. So the son, so he got, so the son, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. The word prodigal means carelessly and foolishly spending, right? But when he has spent it all, when he spent everything he took with him, partying and, you know, everything else, there arose a, a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. So he, he ended up spending all his money. After all his money was gone, all his friends were gone, nobody stood by him, his girl probably left him, you know, uh, you know so everything, everything was gone already, right? Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. So after he was broke, and at the end of himself, at the end of the road that he chose, because we all have a choice, the Lord gives us a free will. He says, I put life and death in front of you. I, you pick life or you choose death. Right? So the father, so after after he came to the end of, the, of himself, you know, partying and doing whatnot, he was wanting for money. He was wanting for food. He was wanting for, you know, probably somewhere to stay because he spent all his money and partying and, you know, you know God knows what. You guys can fill in the blank. So, um, uh, it says, um, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine, fam, famine in that land, and he began to be in one. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods and the swine, pods that the swine ate. So basically, you know, he he. He was okay with eating what the swines, the pigs were eating. Because when he went to go get that job, the only job he could get was, was you know, you know, was out there with the farmer. They had a, they had a, he had a ranch or whatever. And so the farmer sent him to go feed his pigs. And so he was so hungry and, and, and you know, he probably ain't ate in days. And uh, so, so the food that, that, that they were feeding the swines, the Bible says that, he was so hungry that even the food of the swines looked okay to him. And you could just imagine all that food being all over the mud, all wet, nasty, that looked good to him. Like that was in the state of mind that he was already in for being out there in the world and already at the last of the last, you know? So, um, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, the Bible says that, that when he thought of this, man, that's, man, God is so good. Because even, even at the end, you know, you know, you know, even through all that, you know, the Bible says that, you know, he was thinking all that. And then he thought to himself, man, man, what am I doing? You know, man, my father, my father owns you know, all this man, he has all this and that. You know, I was doing good over there. Man, I'm thinking about eating the, the food of the pigs right now. You know, I, I don't came that low to do that. You know, and some of us we 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 come to that point where where you know we, we get down so low in our sin, you know, and doing what we ain't supposed to do that 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 the that the Lord the Lord will reach down and he will he'll 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 put that in you to where to to where you'll come to your senses and realize, man, you know what, man, what am I doing? What am I doing? So, but when he came to himself, he said, How many, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough 
and to spread, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Man. Think about that. I've been there. I've been there. I came to myself. I came to myself when I was in my darkest, when I was in my lowest moment, you know, afflicted. You know, the, the, the enemy had me. He had me, he had me in a chokehold. You know, but but I'll share with y'all here in a little bit my testimony. So y'all can see, I just wanted to share with y'all the story of the prodigal son, of how good the father is to his children. We are his children. You know, he's so good. And you guys will find out right now. He says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. That's what he, he thought to himself that he would tell his father whenever he goes back to his father. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still great a way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven and in, in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted, the fatted cow, which is a cow, here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Merry means is another word for be happy. I looked all this up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, because I mean, when I say Mary, I'm like Mary. Like, hold on, man. So you know, I had a, I had a, you know, I had a, um, you know, do my research. But <laughs> so, anyways, um, uh, for this, my son was dead. Check this out. He says, "For this, my son was dead, and now is alive again. He was lost and is found." And they began to be merry, right? Okay. I'm going to stop there because from there I could, I could take off, right? So, uh, man, <clears throat> that shows us an example of how good God is. It don't matter what you've done. It don't matter where you come from. It don't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what you got going on right now. It doesn't matter, right? God is so good. That he loves us. He loves me and you and each and every one of us in here. From the tallest to the biggest. He loves us a lot. That whenever we come short. Because the Bible says that. For we all have sinned and fallen short from the glory of God. Right? But God is so merciful. That even in our sin. He said even in our sin he died for us. So that we may be saved. Right? So with that being said, I'm going to share with y'all my testimony. So I'm the youngest out of six. My mom was a single mother, and we grew up in Grease Point in the north side of Houston, Texas. And uh, so I was the youngest. My father, he really wasn't around. He was uh, an alcoholic, died at 50, was, was in and out of our lives, uh, really didn't do much for us, was not a good role model. Uh, my mother... She was a hard worker, always working hard, had to work two jobs to provide for me and for my brothers and my sisters. Excuse me. And um, but she, she was never home, never home, because she had to be at work to provide for us. Uh, something that my father, he should have he uh, lead by example, and he should have been there, but it's okay. You know, we all make mistakes. It is what it is, and I don't put the blame of my past on anybody else because at the end of the day we we are we are we we are liable and are responsible for our own actions and our own choices right, right? On, right. so everything i've done in my past it was because of me 
And uh, so we grew up in, 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 in you know, Grease Point. And like I said, my mom was always uh, at work. Man, she wanted to be there for us, but obviously she was too busy working. And, and, and uh, so at the age of 13, we started running the streets. My older brother, Marcos, he was more like a father figure to us. Something happened with him. He got locked up and ended up getting uh, 13 years in prison. By that time, I ended up, and keep in mind, he would put us in boxing. He would keep us in line at this time. I was probably about 12 years old. And uh, so he would keep us in line. You know, he tried his best to, to be a father figure in our lives. And, um, but something happened to him and he made a mistake that led him into incarceration and, and TDCJ for 13 years. He did, he did, no, I'm sorry. They gave him 16 years and he did 12 out of those 16. But when that happened to him, it's like, we had no more guidance and it's not his fault. It's not his fault because like I said, we all, we all have a free choice, our own choices. And with that being said, me and my brother Eric, we started, we started hanging around with the wrong crowd. You know, we started getting into gangs at a really young age and, um, you know, we started doing things that we ain't supposed to be doing. You know, you already know, you know, if, you know, you know, some of you may know, some of you may don't know, but you know, being a part of a gang, you know, it's man, it's using drugs, drinking, uh, you know, you name it, you know, it was, it was going on. And um, that led me to being incarcerated at the age of 15. I ended up uh, doing, uh, I signed, well, they gave me about a, a year, but while me being there, I ended up joining a program that, that I chose to join myself because they were gonna uh, uh, teach me a, a trade. And so I had a volunteer to sign up for this program and I did. So I did two years, but I used to be able to come home on the weekend. And instead of coming home on the weekends on good behavior, my sister would have to drive all the way from the north side all the way to Seabrook, Texas just to go pick me up. And whenever she'll come up with the excuse saying, man, I ain't gonna be able to make it, I'll be like, man, if you don't come get me, I'm an AWOL, I'm fixing, to, I'm fixing to take off. And she's like, no, no estés diciendo eso, doing and this and I'm like, you know. And, and so, you know, I was being selfish. I was real selfish, it was all about me. And when, I, when, when she would pick me up and I would go home on the weekend, I would, I would spend the night with her and I was gone all weekend long with, with my friends. The ones that I thought were my friends. Because you can have friends, you know, we can have friends, but, but, if, but if we don't have the righteous friends, the ones that are gonna empower you, empower us, that are gonna uplift us, not just in, 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 in the carnal way, in the in the in the in the in, in just like the regular physical human way, I'm talking about lift us up spirit in the spiritual way, being led by the spirit in the in the in the things of the Lord. Then those ain't real. I mean those those. I mean you could call them friends, but at the end of the day, you know the Lord the Lord made us to serve Him and Him only, and to be. Uh, evenly yoked with other believers that are that so that way we could we could be able to grow and empower each other lift each other up so i thought they were my friends and they weren't my friends you know we were all in the same in the same in the same mess um i got out of the program i came home uh, you know i started i started living life started living life by that time i'm already 18. Uh, 19 came around. I met my wife. She's in the back. Hello, Carla. Here's my beautiful wife right here. Uh, so, so I met her at the age of 19. I had my first son, Christopher Xavier Huerta, at 19 years old. Keep in mind, I did not know how to be a father. I didn't know how to be a role model, a leader, nothing, none of that. More or less, I didn't even know how to love myself. How could I love my kids or my wife if I didn't even love my own self? You know, I didn't even love, I knew God, I knew of him, but the Bible says that if you are my children, you will obey my commandments. 
You know, the Bible says that he who loves wife or husband more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not pick, the, pick up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who chooses to save his life will lose it. But he who pick up his cross and follow after me will find it. He who, 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 who will, you know, die for my sake, you know, basically we will find life. So at the end of the day, I didn't know how to be none of this, none of it. More or less, I really didn't even know the Lord. So I started having my kids, and um, I was still doing me. By the age of 21, I ended up I ended up getting locked up all over again. I ended up doing 16 months in a, in a state jail in Atascacita. While being there, I got involved with some more uh, gang activity inside of the prison. And I'm sharing this with you because, you know, the Lord wants me to be real with y'all because... You guys need to know uh, the power that the Lord has because he, he, he shows his power through us, through what he could do by transforming us, by making us new, by making us whole, by redeeming us, by setting us free. I've never experienced being free in my life. I was always, uh, you know, wanting to drink, you know, wanting to, you know, talk to other women. You know, wanting to do all this and that. You know, things that we ain't supposed to be doing. But that's what happens whenever we don't know who we are in Christ. We're not being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible talks about the flesh being weak, but the Spirit of God is willing. So with that being said, I ended up getting locked up. And while I was locked up, the Lord put it in my heart to go to church while I was locked up there. And uh, I ended up going, uh, I ended up going also for the wrong things. But while I was there, the seed was already getting planted. The word was getting planted. I ended up accepting Christ that day. And uh, I accepted the Lord, but I, I didn't fully surrender my life to him. And when we don't fully surrender our lives to the Lord, we're always going to keep falling and falling and falling. And I'm going to tell you why, because it's so important that we, that I, I keep, I, I, I can't express this uh, a lot, that we need to be led by the Spirit, by fully being surrendered to the Lord. And I got out. And I told myself I wasn't going to be drinking no more. I was going to be the father I was supposed to be for my kids, the husband for my wife, the son for my mom. None of that happened. And it didn't happen because I still wanted to do me. I still wanted to be out there being the same old JR, doing the same old things, being led by the flesh and not by the spirit. Fast forward. Um, I'm working, I'm in and out of my, my, my relationship with my wife, and this was all because of me. My kid, my older kids, not my baby girl, Sophia's in the back. She, she, sees, she sees the glory now, but she really don't know the, the, the story of, of, of back then, but she's able to hear it now. Um, but my older kids, I hurt my kids dearly. I hurt my wife dearly. I hurt my mother dearly. Every time I would get locked up, my mom, she would, her hard work, earn money. She would go and get her income tax and she'll come and bomb me out. I mean, that's selfish. That's very selfish. So I heard a lot of people, including my mom, my kids. And keep in mind, Everything we do in this world, the Bible says that, they, 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 that we will reap what we sow. Everything we do on this earth, we will pay one way or another. One way or another, it's coming. It's coming. Because we cannot do bad things and not expect 
for for that 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 we're not gonna it's not gonna have consequences. So with that being said, in two thousand and two thousand and um, twelve, I ended up getting a a, a, a case, um, and I ended up going to prison again. This time I did uh, about a little bit over four years. I got an eight year sentence. And uh, by this time I was, I, I got out before I made it to TDC, I was able to come home on a pill bond, which is very strange because you really don't see that often. And uh, so I came home and me and my wife, we weren't together and I, I was out there, man. I was, I, was, I was like the prodigal son, the same way. I was doing me, but I was tired and I was empty inside. I was hurt. I was depressed. I was, I had a void inside of me that nothing in this world could replace. I tried the drugs. I tried the women. I tried the alcohol. I tried things. You name it. But there was always a void inside of my heart that was missing. See, whenever we're not close to our creator, there's always going to be that void inside of your heart. Always. And I'm speaking because I know I speak from experience. And I've, I've talked to a lot of people. And they open up and they tell me the same old thing. So with that being said, I was in, in TDC right before I ended up going back. I told the Lord, I said, you know what, Lord? I said, I'm done. I said, I need you. I'm done doing it my way. I'm done being a mess up, always messing everything up. My family can't trust me. My kids, they don't know me. My wife don't know me. My mom, you know, I'm like, man, Lord, like, I can't do this on my own. I need you. You know, when 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 I go do this time, I need you to I need you to do something in me. And I went to go do my time. While I was doing my time, I decided to get close to the Lord. And I started opening my Bible and I started really getting to know him. And I started reading on his word and I and I got to know the Lord. But I didn't fully surrender. And I told myself, when I come home, I'm not gonna drink no more. I'm not going to do none of that. And I came home and the Lord blessed me. He blessed me with my wife, with my kids again. And uh, keep in mind, I've been now seven years already. While I was in prison, I, I went to the church and one day I was, I was listening to the word. And I like to share this whenever we go to the prison ministries now with my brothers. Uh, that's how the Lord is using us now. So when, when, when I was in the church service... It's like I was listening to the word and I went, like, like I just fall into a daze. Like I was, I was up, I knew what was going on. And it's like I could see myself in the front where the, where, the, where the guys were sharing their testimony. I was in the front and I could see myself just doing what I'm doing now. And then all of a sudden I just, I, you, know, you know, I snapped out of it. But the Lord, the Lord was already showing me what he had planned for me. But I didn't know it at the time. So I got out of prison. The Lord blessed me with my family. Man, he blessed me with a good job. I got blessed uh, to go work for Ben Swinger Glass with a company that did not hire felons at the time. But they opened the door to me because of the Lord. The Lord allowed that to happen. And before that, I was doing roofing for a year, and I, I hated it. I'm not going to lie to you. I hated it because there was no jobs. It was, it was real slow at the time. But every morning, I used to wake up, and I used to tell the Lord, Lord, I don't like this job, and I don't like the little car that I got that I, I'm sacrificing because my family. I want my family. I don't want us to struggle. I want them to be good. You know, Lord, like, you know, you're my provider, Lord, like, I know that you got something better for me and I'm going to be patient. And I know, I know you're going to open up the door for me for something else. And he did a year later. I got, I got introduced, uh, you know, to Biswager Glass and they hired me. 
thanks to the Lord that he hired me, uh, that he allowed them, because it's only, it's only because of him. And uh, so I started working there. And like I said, I didn't fully surrender my life to the Lord yet. Keep in mind, when we don't fully surrender our lives to the Lord, things are going to happen. And, and, you know, we start we start drifting away from the things of the Lord. While I was locked up, I was in the Word. I was, I was man, Lord, you know, you know, but I was learning from them. But like I said, no, not fully surrender. So slowly but surely, I started doing what I said I wasn't going to do again. Started drinking all over again. Drinking has been my downfall since I was a young kid. Every time I started drinking, I wanted to do other things. Started messing around with cocaine. I'm just being honest with y'all. You know, the Lord wants me to put it out there. I'm just going to put it out there for y'all. You know, the Holy Spirit leads. And uh, so I started doing that. The Bible speaks about the unclean spirit. I started drinking on the weekends, drinking and drinking, but the Holy Spirit would convict me. And I would have beer in my refrigerator and I, I, would, I would just start weeping and crying and man, Lord, forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry. I won't do this no more, man. I need, I, man, I, you know, I want to stop, Lord, but man, I, I'm weak. And I would go and I would empty my cans, my bottles, throw away that, that little stash that I had and uh, the Lord will forgive me because he's so faithful that he'll forgive you it don't matter, it don't matter what you've done he'll forgive you if you truly repent from the bottom of your heart he'll forgive you but let's be careful though because when he healed the blind man if I'm not mistaken he told him now go and sin no more lesser a greater thing come upon you Man, these are things that we need to grasp. We need to get a hold of his word. He tells us how we're supposed to live, what not to do, and how to do. But remember, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. I started drinking again, and the Bible speaks about an unclean spirit. When the Lord forgives you, the spirit that was in you will leave. And he's just waiting because the Bible says, and uh, it says uh, in, um, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, it says in uh, uh, Corinthians, uh, right here, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. It says, uh, it says, be sober minded because the adversary, the adversary is your accuser, my accuser, Satan, is out there like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. That means that Satan is walking around, roaming the earth, just watching, doing this. Man, what JR got going on over there, man? I, I, know, I know he just asked for forgiveness. Yeah, okay, the Lord forgave him, but man, I, man let me... Let me just keep my eye on him. Because as soon as he falls, I'm sending my troops over there, which is the unclean spirits. I started picking that up again. The unclean spirit came back, and the Bible talks about this time the unclean spirit comes back, not by himself, but with seven more spirits, worser than the first spirit. Making the state of the man worse than what he was before. That's why when I read that, I was like, man, I said, man, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder when I would ask for forgiveness, he'll forgive me. And I had this heavy burden lifted off of me. And then when I pick it right back up, my condition got worse. That put chills on my body. I don't know if it's putting chills on your body because I know I've been there. I know I ain't the only one either. So I'm just saying. Things started going downhill. I started doing things that I didn't want to do. And like the prodigal son, the Bible says that he came to his senses. To his sins. 
And I said, man, you know what, Lord? On a Monday morning, I was on my way to work. And I could already see where my life was going. I already could see that I was going to lose my wife. I already could see I was either going to end up in prison or losing everything like I did before. So I was done and I was sick and tired, man. And I was on my way to work one Monday morning. And I started, I put on some, wor uh, some worship music and I started praising the Lord and the Holy Spirit came upon me and I started just crying like a baby. Right, crying like a baby and I was like, forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent, I'm done. I can't do this on my own, Lord. I never surrendered my life to you. And today, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I need you to guide me, Lord, because I can't do this on my own. I'm weak. And I don't want to lose the blessings that you have given me, Lord. I said, I need you to do something inside of me, Lord. Set me free. Set me free, Lord. And thank, thanks to the Lord that his word says that for if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. Old things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. Thank you, Jesus. And I prayed and I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm not in church, but I, 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 I know I need to be involved in a good church, Lord, where your spirit is present, where the word is uncompromised, where you could uplift me, where you could use me, Lord, for your will, not for my will, but for your will, Lord. I want to do what you want me to do. My brother back there, Gabriel, we grew up together in the neighborhood. Little did I know, he was already serving the Lord with him and his wife for a few years already. He reached out to me. The Lord sent them to me. He invited me to church. And he posted a picture with another brother that I know that every time I, well, since I started doing time in the Harris County Jail, Every time I would go get locked up, I would meet this guy that I was really cool with. His name is Christopher Cordova. Cordova. He's a brother in Christ now. Every time, I'm, I've seen him like two or three times going in, going out. He went and did time, I went and did time. A few years later, we come back, we meet again in the same tank. But little did we know that the Lord had a plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen. Come on. Amen. So he already has a plan and a future lined up for us. Right. Just like he does for y'all, just like he had for me, for all of us. The plan and the future is there. But remember, John 10, 10, the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy but the Lord said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Amen. It's up to us. Right. It takes full surrender to the Holy Spirit, to the Lord. Whatever needs to be done, whatever you need to take away, take away, Lord. Take the desires of me wanting to chase after what ain't you. Take it away from me, Lord. I fully surrender my life to you. And that's what I did. And I, I, I went to the Power of Love Church. Just what I asked for. And, and also, I asked that he could lead me somewhere where they were doing prison ministry because, like I said, he already had placed prison ministry in my heart years back. So I was hungry to do prison ministry, but I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing his will. He can't use us because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If we keep our temple, his temple, Fogged up, um, full of whatever, unclean, I mean, you name it. If we're living that lifestyle, he can't use us. We got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is real, and it will direct you, correct you, and whenever you something comes up, when the enemy puts something in your, in your, in your thoughts, in your mind, the Holy Spirit will... And, 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 and you will think about, you will be like, hmm, you know, you'll start meditating on it. The Holy Spirit will come and shut it down real quick. Hey, 
Hey, hey, hey, hey, I just set you free. Hey, you better rebuke that devil. And I do. I learned how to rebuke Satan now. When he puts a thought in my head that I know it ain't the Lord, because don't nothing bad come from the Lord. For all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, anything that happens, just know that it's not in vain. It's not happening just because there's a reason behind that. If you're a believer, for the unbeliever, it's, oh, man, it's, it, it's just the life I was there. You know, woo, woo, whatever. That's just what it no. That ain't what it is. You know what, Lord? I trust you. I know there's a there's a meaning and a purpose behind this. We just don't know it. But you know what, Lord? We trust you. Seven years later, um, going back to the church, I, I I got I got I started going. I started going. I started dying to my flesh. And the Lord took the desire of me wanting to drink away from me. And those first three weeks, it was heavy. Because I would go to bed and I would wake up in tears because the enemy was in my dreams. And I was partying and drinking and getting so drunk that I would wake up for three weeks. I would wake up at night with tears in my eyes because I thought I failed the Lord. And, and to fail the Lord is the last thing I want to do. That's the last thing I want to do. Because I know, I know that he made me a new man. And all my sins have been forgiven. And I know where he needs to take me and where he's going to take me. And the Bible says that the beginning of uh, fear in the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Like, don't fear him like, oh, Lord, I fear. No, but just know that, that, that he wants good for us, but he will correct his children. Just saying. So I fully surrender my life. Seven years later, God is so good. I was able to go back into the prisons with my brothers, my brother Omero, my brother Gabriel, and some other brothers from the church. We go back into the prison walls where I was once, where we were once. And we're able to share our testimony and how good God is when we allow him to come and dwell inside of our hearts. He would take that stony heart and chip it away and put a brand new heart. So that way you can love others the way the Father loves us. He would show you how to be a good role model, a good example for your kids, a good example for your friends, a good example for your wife, for your husband, for your, for, you know, I mean, you name it. That's, that's what the Lord does. He's a loving God. And I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful because today I'm able to stand on my two feet, ten toes down for the Lord, proclaiming his name. Sharing his power because I've been transformed, I've been reborn, I've been set free. I no longer drink no more. I gave it up for the Lord. I gave it up for the Lord. I gave up everything that is not good for me in his walk, for his will. I've given it up. And now, you know, I'm able to go to church with my mom, with my wife, with my daughter. Now my brother's coming. He just got out. He did 12 years. My other brother, he just got out. You know, he started picking up drinking, but thank God that I'm walking the walk that I'm walking now because I'm an example to him and to everybody else. My victory and your victory is somebody else's victory. People are watching. When we claim to be the children of the Most High, new creation in Jesus Christ, People are watching what we're doing. And if we're doing something in secret, guess what? The Lord is watching too. So, I'm about to end. I encourage you guys that whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter what you're going through. There's nothing that the Lord can't fix. He makes the impossible possible. He will heal you, redeem you, set you free. For who the Son says free is free indeed. 
And some of you probably don't use drugs. Some of you probably don't drink. Some of you probably don't do as bad as what I was doing. But there's things that we know deep down inside that we shouldn't be doing. And if you just allow the Holy Spirit to take over you, and if you fully surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and he will guide you and lead you and be your teacher. And we're able to walk this earth the way Jesus did. Walking in obedience, being led by the Holy Spirit of God. Things that you used to not be able to do, you'll be able to do them. Because for we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You know, he is the teacher. So I encourage you guys, man, uh, later on today, whenever the service is over, some of you guys will have that chance to rededicate your lives to the Lord. Or if you never accepted the Lord to be the Lord and Savior of your life and fully surrendered to him, you'll have that chance tonight. And I hope and I pray that the Lord will soften up your heart. And don't be embarrassed because the Lord says that if you're embarrassed, if you're ashamed of me in front of man, I'll be ashamed of you in front of my Father in heaven. So let's not be ashamed. Open up your heart. Receive what, what, what the Lord is speaking through us. Um. God is so good and he loves you and he's waiting on you to come back to dwell in his presence.